Hello, everybody. I am here with an amazing, an amazing queen. I'm here with actress, producer, set it off queen. I'm here with Miss Vivica Fox. Hello, how are you doing? I am blessed, darling. How are you today? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed as well. That's the best mm. way to put it. I like that. I'm blessed as well. I'm feeling highly favored. <laughs> <laughs> All of this uh, Corona mess. How's it, how's it going over there? Wow, California, you know, everyone, believe it or not, except we had some folks that had to get to the beach. Um, but overall, mostly everyone in California has been uh, staying safe and staying home. I know I have. Uh, the good thing for me is that I've been able to do a lot of like my podcast interviews from home. So I've been really busy. I had a film come out. I've been doing my podcast interviews. So I'm staying home, staying safe and staying busy. Yes, I love that. And, you know, and it's hard, I think, on um, people who have so many businesses, you know, and I know you yourself, you are a hustler. You know? <laughs> so I know this must be hard on you. How is it? How are you uh, adapting to, when, to everything when it comes to business? Well, um, you know, I, I'll admit it. At first, it was kind of like, at first, I was like, oh, I get to sleep. I don't have to rush to the airport. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, I miss the airport. I miss going to my set. But the beautiful thing for me um, is that I had uh, a film come out, my podcast came out, and all of the other productions that I was about to get into, I was about to do two other films for Lifetime. We just pushed everything back, and we're just waiting for the governor to open things back up. So everyone's kind of like on hold together. So everyone's just having patience together. I see, I see. So let's talk about your new film that came out on Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> uh, you you co-starred with Liam Hemsworth, Vince Vaughn, so many other amazing names. How was that production for you? What was that like? Well, we filmed in Alabama. Um, that, that I know of all places. And I had never filmed in Alabama. So when I first got the location where we were going to shoot at, I was like, oh, we going down south. Uh, but believe it or not, the Gulf Coast was beautiful. The food was excellent. Um, we shot all of my scenes on this little boat house um, that was like sitting in like this little lake. So it was very intimate. So I got to spend a lot of time with Lim, Lim Hensworth, Vince Vaughn, and the director, Clark Duke, who is making his directorial debut. And I just want to give you guys a little bit of history about Clark Duke. Clark Duke used to be a child star and was on the show Two and a Half Men. And so now he's like, Yes, I know. Everyone said the same thing. Oh, yeah. Everyone's like, that's the kid from Two and a Half Men. And I'm like, yep, y'all, that's yeah. the kid from Two and a Half Men. That is, that's crazy. Wow, and it's funny. I used to watch Two and a Half Men all the time. It didn't even click in my head. Yes. So, so how was his, his skill as becoming a director? What was that like working with him? Well, as an actress, you appreciate, really, you appreciate having an actor-director because he understands that because we filmed in this little boathouse, he totally understood that there were times that there were things that were written that we couldn't do. So he wasn't, and he also co-wrote the script as well. So he wasn't that married to the words. He was fun. He was flexible. Um, I enjoyed working with him. And uh, for a first-time director, he knew exactly what he was going to do. Um, he never went over, he never was cranky. Like it was really an enjoyable experience to work with them because he knows what it's like to be on the other side of that camera. Right, right. That seems, that seems like that would be great for you guys, especially, Ooh. you know, okay, <laughs> right. I think it's great for you guys. You guys get to have somebody that's been on your side. So they're yes. crazy about, oh, I need this done right. I need this done like this. I need this done like that. I love that. So I'm, I'm really excited. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm really excited to go ahead and check that out. Yes. And um, I think, Vivica, with you, it's very interesting that you have continued to keep yourself relevant, which I think is very, it, it's, it's, it's commendable. Because I think a lot of people, especially with you being in the industry for as many years Decades. as you have been. You yeah. Decades, huh? <laughs> Decades. I got for these children, okay? <laughs> You've been in industry for so long, you know, I, I, I commend you for staying so, rel so relative and keeping yourself involved. Let's talk about the longevity of your career. How are okay. you able to keep that up? Well, for me, I, I'm very blessed that I have a wonderful team. And when I say having a wonderful team, um, I have an excellent publicist, my publicist, BJ Coleman, uh, who helped me to become an author. My book, Every Day I'm Hustling, he was the one who got me 
my book deal. He was like, Vivica, I think you're at a, at a, at a point in your life where you need to start um, sharing the secrets of your success. You're having an amazing resurgence in your career right now. Because at first when he said, it's time to build, do a book, I was like, no, I don't want another job. I'm good. Um, but he was like, no, share your secrets of your success that you realize what it's like to be a woman in your 50 to go into new chapters and that you're doing it so well. I said, okay, all right, BJ. <laughs> so uh, we got me a book and then my agent, Sheila Leger, she's always finding new chapters. I share the secret in my book. The secret of my success is having a good team. Build yourself a dream squad. Build yourself a team of people who see opportunities for you that maybe you wouldn't even have ever ex uh, thought of for yourself. That they take you into new chapters, that, they that they're honest with you. So I would say the reason why I've had longevity is my team and also versatility. I always make sure that I tell young actors, be a triple threat, be able to sing, act, dance, because you never know what that day the role may come from, may call for. Because now you got actors that are becoming singers, singers that are becoming actors. Like everyone's doing a little bit of everything. Everyone's loving to dance. I mean, you know, it used to be that you only did one thing. You stayed in one lane. Well, it's right. not like that anymore. So I always stress to people that versatility equals longevity. Be able to host, be able to sing, be able to dance, and also have a good attitude. I love that positivity. That's I love these tips that you got for this long. Oh like, I'm seeing this. If you if I'm following your tips, I'll be following in, in this media game for a long time with all the longevity you just blessed upon my life. So Yes. And so, then also host. Like you how you're doing. I've hosted talk shows. I mean Yeah, you've been you've been everywhere, I think. I think you've been you've touched everything and now you've touched being an author. So you've wrote a you've written a book as you just mentioned. Yes. How did that change your perspective of like being an author or writing your own? What was that like for you? I know that definitely may have changed some some ways that you you viewed certain things when it came to book selling or or even book reading. Yeah, you know, becoming an author for me was uh an amazing experience. I think the the trippiest part of it was kind of going back down memory lane um, and, and thinking about some of the wonderful milestones. Because, you know, when you're working, you're just going from, you know, and so many times in working so much and trying to become successful, I forgot to take the time to smell the roses. So doing the book took me down memory lane, took me through, gosh, leaving home at 17 years old, uh, being able to live out my dreams beyond my wildest expectations, what it was like when I was able to buy my first house, what it was like when I was able to do things for my family, um, what it was like working on a set, what it was like when I got my hair collection. It was just kind of going down memory lane. And also, I had recently just lost my father. My oh, father had just passed away at the time, and I dedicated the book to his memory. And so when I did the audio portion of the book, it got very emotional for me. So there are a couple of times that I had to take a break, but um, Hustling, Every Day I'm Hustling is a wonderful book where I share secrets. I was able to also put um, a period on some chapters, my relationships, explain my side of things. Um, it just got to let people know me because for the longest time I was very guarded and always thought that I had to be so perfect all the time. So it was nice to let everybody know, you know what? <laughs> things happen to your girl Vivica. Yes, I love that. I love that you that you were so raw and so uncut in the book. Now, speaking of raw and uncut, let's talk about uh -huh. your podcast, uh, Hustling with Vivica A. Fox. Now, I've I've listened to a few episodes that you've had so far, yes. and I love it. I Thank love you. that you're so you're you're so unapologetic about being you. So let's talk about what what made you decide to get into it. The podcast ha happened because of my talk show, The Truth That I Had with Dr. Phil and Jay McGraw and Stage 29 Productions. We unfortunately was canceled. Um, but when we got canceled, they were like, oh, we're not done with you, boo. <laughs> no, ma'am. We love working with you. You on time. You can be knowing your stuff. You don't mind being the first one there and the last one to leave your little worker be. So let us figure out what is the next chapter that we're going to have with Vivica Fox. And I said, okay, give me a call. So they gave me a call, uh, well, my business partner did, Lita Richardson, uh, and said, hey, what do you think about having your own podcast? And at first I was like, my own podcast? 
And she says, yeah, it's basically like having your own talk show, but this time it's going to be all you. And the great thing about having your own podcast is it can be raw, uncensored, unfiltered. You can have whoever you want on there. And for me, that's what really motivated me because I wear so many different hats and I've been so blessed to work with so many different types of people and have different arenas. So far I've had Waka Flocka and Tammy Rivera. I interviewed Mary Wilson. I interviewed Blair Underwood, who I worked with on um, City of Angels and set it off. I was able to interview, um, let me see who else did I interview? Uh, Waka Flocka, Kim Whitley. Kim Whitley, who I did the salon with. Um, I interviewed Johnny Gill. Johnny Gill was a hoot. I interviewed Tank the other day. So oh. I also interviewed Chelsea Gray, uh, the star of the WNBA LA Sparks, who I've been a supporter, uh, a sponsor of for five years. Um, I have the Vivica Fox Hair Collection has sponsored the LA Sparks because I believe in women's sports. And I believe that the, especially the female basketball players, they don't get as much exposure as what they deserve. So it gave me an opportunity as a businesswoman, as a sponsor, and as a fan to let them, let them shine and let people get to know her a little bit better. And her, she was a, she was so much fun. So like I said, it, I love doing the podcast because I get to interview people that I'm interested in. Right. So with the podcast, I know that you had a couple of people that you are actually friends with, like Kim Whitley, for example, yes. um, that you brought on to the show with you. So I wanted to talk about, I think that social media has given us, given us, us normal people, um, <laughs> uh, some availability to like what it's like when in celebrities' lives, and I see that the black community or the black acting community is is a little bit more tight knit than I thought it was, and I think that's so great. So what can we can we touch on that a little bit? How I think at least, at least from the outside looking in, I think that uh, a lot of the black actors and actresses, you know, they made sure they look out for each other. You know, absolutely. I agree with you 100% that that is what you have now that social media is out there that you get to see that we celebrate um, each other and are really involved with each other from relationships, marriages, divorces, babies, baby showers, uh, weddings, all kinds of things that like there's, I'm very close to a lot of black actresses from, you know, Regina King, Tisha Campbell, Tashina, uh, Lisa Ray, Jasmine Lewis, all of us hang out, Vanessa Williams, Star Jones, Leela Rashawn, like we've all been close for a very long time. And the beautiful thing is that we all now are starting, Tasha Smith, my sister from Empire, Taraji, that we're all now producers, writers, directors. So besides being friends, we also hire each other, support each other. And I think that's wonderful that we're doing projects together and that you all will see that it's like, yeah, we're actors and we're celebrities, but we also girlfriends and homies too. I love that. I think that you you guys are setting a, a, a tone for those who are coming to. Now I won't say replace you, but right. those that are coming Generation to. Generation next. Yeah, the next generation. They're definitely you're definitely showing that we got to stick together because if it ain't us, then who? You know. And can I tell you for myself, I I learned a very important lesson from my role model, legend, icon, Pam Greer. Pam Greer, I got to interview when I did a special for BET where you could interview people that were your role models and that you admired. And so I got to interview Pam Greer. I actually named my production company after Pam Greer, Foxy Brown Productions. And the one thing, besides me crying the whole time, because I could not believe I was sitting there talking with Pam Greer, uh -huh. was that she passed to me. She said, I said, you're so sweet. You're so nice. I love you so much. She said, it's exactly how I'm supposed to be and how I want you to be. It is my job to pass the baton to you. Just like in time, Vivica, I'm leaving it up to you to pass the baton to someone else. And I, that that's with me. It really did. I love that. That is, um, uh, wow. That's amazing uh, advice that she gave you. Words that she gave you is amazing. So Vivica, um, I'm going to, we're going to, uh, I love chatting with you. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> um, so can you tell us a little bit, this is going to be our last question here. A little bit. Sure. Of, uh, I, look, I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be. But okay. uh, let's talk about your, your hairline. Because yes. I wanted to purchase a little something for myself. So, yeah, you know. 
<laughs> so what made you decide to get into being a hair vendor? My, my business partner, Lita Richardson. I'm telling you, everybody got to get them a Lita. Lita Bita, as I call her. Lita don't be playing no games when it comes to getting them coins, okay? But Lita Richardson, uh, my business partner, um, came to me one day and she said, Devika, what do you think about having your own hairline? And I said, what do you mean by that? She says, wigs, uh, weaves, the whole nine. Um, I actually took over for Beverly Johnson, who at the time just decided that she didn't want to do it anymore. And Lita threw my name in there and they're like, oh my God, and this is when I'm doing Independence Day and all this. So they're like, do you think she want to have her own hairline? So baby, when she hit me, we did our homework and I found out, guess who spends a whole bunch of money on hair is the sisters. I said, sign me up. And as much money as I, Vivica Fox, had spent on wigs, weaves, and all that good stuff, I jumped at the opportunity. Now, I got teased when I first started doing the Vivica Fox hair collection. I did. People didn't get the whole vision. They said, ooh, when the checks stopped coming in, now she's selling wigs. Not realizing that I was building the brand of Vivica Fox. Right. That now, Vivica Fox is a household name that when you go to your beauty supplies, there's a big picture of me. I was just about to say, I've seen you in my beauty supplies. I've seen you <laughs> in my beauty supplies. Okay. <laughs> and now I love it when girls come up to me and be like, girl, I'm wearing Britney or I'm wearing, uh, look, you know, whatever, Lisa, I'm wearing da da da, or I got on your hair. That makes, that warms my heart because that's me taking the brand of Vivica Fox and making her a household brand and getting that good old coin in a business that I love doing. I love fashion. I love hair, you know, and now these children wearing their hair all the way down to their ankles, child. Yep. Look, it'll be me next. I just, I, it's, not, it's not in my tax bracket yet, but it'll be me next. Don't worry. Good. Well, because honey, you, you, I'm just going to compliment you, let you know that hair you rocking today is everything. You like yes. this. Thank yes. you, girl. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, Vivica, you're for welcome. joining us today. You were amazing. I love chatting with you. Whenever you're in the New York area, we're here. <laughs> and I just want to say to you, Zaina, you know, best wishes thank for, you. you know, everything that's about to happen for you. Um, you, you got a great smile. You got great presence. Um, best wishes to you, sis, to stay safe. Thank you. And so to and tell everybody in New York, y'all stay safe too, okay? I will. I will. <laughs> we gonna get through so this, y'all.